Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. All right, I know some of you guys out there wanna have a DVD that, you know, just loops for a long time. I don't know, maybe you go on a convention for popcorn makers or unicycles or toast that butters your bread. I don't know, but you wanna show your product and you don't wanna have to keep going back and having it play over and over and over again. Yeah, I know, there are the repeat buttons or replay buttons on DVD players nowadays, but hey, let's just make it simple and make a DVD that loops. Or some of you guys out there might just want to have a menu that lasts longer than 12 freaking seconds. I can help you get that done. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, Pinnacle peeps, here we are in Pinnacle Studio 17 Ultimate. Let's go ahead and get this looping DVD or this extended DVD menu thing popping. All right, first and foremost, create your project. All right, put all your video clips, sound, music, and all that down into the timeline. Do all your trimming, splitting, clipping, and make your video beautiful. All right, for me, I'm just going to pull one clip down in here. It don't make sense for me to create all this stuff. I'm not doing the unicycle convention, you know, video to be showing to all the people who love unicycles. I'm just making a tutorial for you. Check out the little video I placed in here. I think you're going to like it. I might, you know, play it for you. Hey, man. How are the people doing out there on YouTube, my brother? I like the rhythm, the way the sounds are going down, man. All right, anyway, that's enough for that. So I got this little clip down in here with my sound and all this good stuff. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to create two files, all right? One file is going to be the total project with the pictures, video, sound, everything. And then the other file will just be the audio from the project, all right? You need to have both of them in order to make your menu looping or to extend your uh, video menu to make it how you want it to be. So now that we got our project in here, we're gonna click on the export button. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create the video file. And for this, we're gonna do a MPEG-2 file. Now, the reason why we're doing the MPEG-2 is because we're creating a DVD. And MPEG-2 is DVD compatible. So when you go to your choices here, make sure you select DVD compatible, all right? Then you wanna select the location on your drive where you will save this file. You must remember this location for later on. So you wanna click on the folder here and you wanna select your location and click okay. All right, once you're done with that, click start export and it will export your file to the location you selected on your computer. Once you're done with that, the little pop-up will show up. You just click the little close button, but stay in the exporter screen because you need to do the audio file. So what you want to do now is go up to your settings and change it from MPEG-2 to audio. All right. Once again, you want to select the location on your computer where this will be saved. Once again, you must remember this location because you're going to need it later on. Once you have your, your location selected, click Start Export, and it will export the audio file for you. Once you're done with all of that, you can go ahead and close this bad boy out. Now, over here in the library section or library bin, we need to make sure that the locations where we saved the video file and the audio file are open in here right now. So if they're not open, you just go to Navigation, Go to video, select the location, wherever it's at. And then you want to open up a new tab if, ne if necessary. 
And then you want to go navigation again. And you want to choose where you saved your audio to. Now, the reason why we want to do that now is because when we get over into the menu editor, those locations will already be accessible to us for creating our menu. Now, we got our project here. We were good to go with everything. We created our, you know, little DVD menu. Now, we don't really need the project to be in here anymore. All right, we already saved it to a location, so don't be scared, okay? You can, if you need to, you can do file, save as, and save your project as something. But then you want to do file, new, movie. All right, I'm going to hit don't save because I don't really care about that. Now, you want to bring a small clip down to the timeline, but make sure that whatever you bring down in the timeline, it matches the aspect ratio of the DVD menu that you want. Meaning, like, if I were to bring this clip down, all right, see how it doesn't fill the whole screen in the preview? It's not, it's going to make my DVD menu be like a standard instead of widescreen. So I want to choose something that's going to keep it widescreen, which is this logo here. So I'm going to left click on it. I'm going to drag it down into the timeline. Now, it doesn't really matter what the heck you put in there because nobody's ever going to see it. Okay. Now, if you're doing a uh, actual DVD menu, a full DVD with the menu and stuff, disregard what I just said, you could just go ahead and click on the uh, author tab. But if you're not, if you're just making a looping DVD, then all you really need to hear is a little picture. All right. Doesn't matter how long it is. So now we're going to click on the author tab. And it's going to say, do you want to create a disc project from your open movie? And I say, yes. Because I do. Now, when it does that, you'll see that a disc menu tab is going to pop up. So I want to click on this disc menu tab. And then I want to choose my disc menu. It doesn't really matter which one I pick because I'm going to cover it up anyway with my own background. All right. And all the other stuff, I'm going to delete and move the heck out of there. But I'm just going to choose the standard one. So I'm going to left click on it, hold the left, the left mouse button down, left mouse button. Say it with me, left mouse button. All right, I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to drag it to the menu list area. All right, and now we see that we got our little menu up in here in the preview screen. So down here, there's a little edit button. I'm going to click on this. Now, once again, depending on what you're doing, you might want to change this text up to be whatever you want it to be, right? But I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to backspace here. I'm going to click on the text above it and backspace here. I don't need it, okay? I'm going to have my own background on my looping DVD. Now, if you're making a menu, you can leave these play buttons down here if you want to. Once again, it's really up to you, all right? I'm getting rid of them because I don't need them. Backspace and backspace. So now I really have nothing on here right now. So what I want to do is I want to go up here to the media area and I want to select the files that I saved earlier. So I told you to remember the location, didn't I? And I told you to open up that location, didn't I? Now you know why I told you to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to scroll down to the menu background I created. I'm going to left click on the mouse button, hold it down, and drag it to the background settings area. All right. It's in here beautifully. Now, this little button here for the background aspect, aspect ratio. Right now, it's set to stretch. I want to change that to keep aspect. All right. Now, you'll see that if I play this, even though I saved it with sound, there is no sound. This is why we had to create the second audio file. So now I'm going to go over here and find the audio. And I call it menu music. I'm going to left click, hold it down, and drag it to the audio drop zone. Now if I play this, I got the audio and I got the video that I created. And they're perfectly synced up. Now. One thing I did not mention, I should have, but I didn't, so, oh well. You got to remember the amount or the length of time of your project that you created because you want to change the time of the menu. Now, if your project is longer than 15 minutes, tough cookies. 
if you try to make the disc that is longer than 15 minutes of a menu, it's going to crash. It's not going to create it. So do something less than 15 minutes. All right. That's your max. I wouldn't even go close to 15 minutes if I didn't have to. All right. But now I need to change the time on this. So I know that the timing for mine is 59.24. So I'm going to go down here to the timing and I'm going to click on this, change it to 59.24 and hit enter. And now you see my timeline is now longer than 12 freaking seconds. It's actually 59.24 that I created. All right. Now, the last thing I need to do, if this is a uh, looping DVD menu and I'm not going to have the play button or the selections button, I need to create a button. Because if I don't, it's not going to function as a menu. It's just going to say there's something wrong. You don't have any buttons in it. So I got to create a small button on here. So I'm just going to right click here. And let's see, I'm going to, as a matter of fact, let's do this. I'm going to right click where there's nothing. And I'm going to go to add shape and I'm going to add a circle. I'm going to make this circle real freaking small so that it could barely even be seen. And I'm going to move it somewhere off to the bottom of the screen where nobody can see it. And I'll make it smaller again. And then where it says not a button, I'm going to change it to normal. And I'm just going to leave it like that. All right. Now that it has a button on it. Nobody can see the button. I made it so dang tiny. But it has a button and I'm good to go now. All right. So everything's all set up. I can click OK. Now, if I were to play the disc simulator here. Go ahead and click on this. Now you see that it's just the audio and the video I put in there. You can't see the button. You can't see anything. All right. So basically, just like any other looping DVD or DVD menu, when it gets to the end, it's just going to play all over again. I've got 59 seconds to waste to show you that. But believe me, it's going to just play all over again. So also, remember, no more than, don't do more than 15 minutes on this. All right. So now I can either just click this little button here. It's going to start to bring up the burn disk screen, or I could have clicked export, either one. And now I want to change this to the type, to DVD. I'm going to leave it on best quality. And I just pop my DVD in, hit burn disk, or if you want to create an image first and then, you know, burn it. Do it however the heck you want. But that's it. It's a wrap, baby. How to make a looping DVD or extended DVD menu. All right, people, there it is. A looping DVD or a menu that plays for longer than 12 seconds. You make the call, all right? But you guys know the routine. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it. Hug it. Comments. Leave me your comments. You know I'll always get back with you. If I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction to get you the help you need. Don't forget to hit me up on all the social networks out there. Hit me up on YouTube. Hit me up on Google+. Hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter. Hit me up all over the world, baby. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe. All right? Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.